360 Reality Audio, an immersive music format using Sony's object-based 360 spatial sound technology, is now integrated directly into Pro Tools Studio and Ultimate. 360 Reality Audio lets you place sounds above or below, in front, to the side or behind, to bring listeners right to the center of an elevated musical experience. Pro Tools Studio and Ultimate customers receive a light version of the Audio Futures Walk Mix Panner and 360RA Walk Mix Renderer that let you mix and monitor 360 Reality Audio content directly inside your session. Quickly start your 360 Reality Audio mix from an existing Pro Tools Dolby Atmos session. Continue to mix and edit in both formats within the same session. No separate mastering software or rendering apps are required. The components to enable 360RA mixing in Pro Tools are installed by the 360RA Walk Mix Creator Lite installer found in Avid Link or your Avid account. This installer includes limited versions of Audio Futures Walk Mix Panner and 360RA Walk Mix Renderer. These versions only support up to 10 objects and don't let you export full mixes. For the purposes of this video, to demonstrate the complete workflow, I will be using the fully functional versions which can be purchased at walkmix.com. Note that the installer also includes Walk Mix Player as well as a 360RA Walk Mix Creator plugin. The plugin is for legacy workflows and is not required if you use the new integrated Pro Tools Panner and Renderer. Let's start by taking a stereo session and setting up for a 360RA mix. First, we need to configure the 360RA Renderer in Pro Tools IO Setup. Switch to the Renderer tab and choose 360RA Walk Mix Renderer from the pop-up list. The only setting needed here is to choose your monitoring path. For this video, I'm just working with headphones, but if you have a surround speaker set up, choose that monitor path here. Back in the edit window, go to the toolbar view menu and make sure that renderer is shown. From here, you can enable and disable the renderer, select the active renderer, choose your monitoring format and open the renderer window. To the right of the renderer window is a status display that represents where your speakers are located and the position of active audio objects. The main area shows settings for the currently active monitors. For headphones, this is a level control, EQ correction, and a menu where you can add headphone profiles. When the 360RA renderer is active, the output selector in tracks has an additional option to assign as a 360RA object. Once assigned, the standard Pro Tools panner will be replaced with the Walk Mix panner in the track's output window. In this session, all the tracks are routed to the main stereo output, so I can simply hold Option or Alt and assign all the tracks as objects at once. Anything that's not assigned as an object will not be included in the final 360 RA mix. Let's look at the panner for a mono track. The panner shows you two views of the spherical sound field in which you can position objects. You can choose which views to use from the menus. The perspective view can be rotated to help visualize where objects are placed. The scroll wheel zooms the views. Move an object in either plot to set its position. Objects are always positioned on the surface of the sphere. When using the top view to move an object away from the ear level horizon, movement will alternate between upwards and downwards travel. This allows you to perform a full vertical cycle by moving from one edge to the other and back again. Stereo or surround sources show multiple objects in the panner, which you can position separately. The lock icon lets you temporarily group all objects together. You can control or start click objects for selective grouping. You can now go ahead and position or automate panning in all your tracks. There are only two automation lanes for each object, azimuth or horizontal angle and elevation or vertical angle. In this finished mix, you can see all the sources spaced around the sound field in the renderer. In this session, I'm using a stereo reverb return, which I've positioned above and slightly to the rear. If you're using a surround reverb, you can position its multiple outputs as virtual speakers. To export a 360RA mix, use the Bounce Mix command from the File menu. From the Export Type menu, choose 360RA Walk Mix Renderer. Pro Tools will bounce the mix, then open the Renderer window, which will now show file export options. Choose your format options, output location, and title, etc. 
the level options generate multiple variations with different discrete object densities, used by streaming delivery platforms to adjust to available bandwidth. When you're all set, click Export. You can use the WalkMix Player app to validate your exports, either as SAM or ADM files. ADMs created by the 360RA renderer can also be opened in Pro Tools via the Import ADM command. Often you may be mixing and delivering in multiple immersive formats. Pro Tools 2025.10 introduces some powerful features that make it possible to move between different formats in one session without losing pan and routing information. This is the Pro Tools Atmos for Music demo session, Stratosphere. Let's convert this mix to the 360 Reality Audio format. First, I'll switch from the Dolby renderer to the 360RA renderer. Pro Tools posts a message saying that it will create a new set of pan data for 360RA based on the Atmos mix. It asks you to choose the closest format to the monitoring environment that was used to create the Atmos mix. After processing, you'll see that all the original output and object assignments are no longer visible, and all tracks are now assigned as 360RA objects. However, all the original pan data and output assignments are kept safe in the background, allowing you to return to an Atmos mixing configuration later on. In the renderer, you can see all the objects now in the spherical pan format. And for comparison, here's the original data from the Atmos monitor. Notice that no objects are positioned in the lower hemisphere of the sound field. This is because Atmos and the native Cartesian Pro Tools panner don't use positioning below the listener level. Conversely, the 360 RA environment doesn't position anything within the sound field or have a source size parameter. The conversion gives you a good starting point, but you'll want to check and adjust the mix. The kick track was originally panned to the middle of the listener position in Atmos. The conversion has translated this into a center panned front position. With 360RA, I can experiment with placing sounds below the listener. Let's have a deeper look at some pan data as it moves between the formats and how you can make manual conversions. I'm back in our original Atmos mix here. Let's focus on this synth track which is rooted to the bed at left and right center positions at listener level. Now I'll switch to the 360RA renderer. The track is assigned as a 360RA object and panned to match the original mix. Now let's say I choose to add some height to this track and maybe even automate some movement. If later on I switch back to Atmos, you'll see that my mix is restored to its previous state because Pro Tools stores the Atmos panning and routing separately. In fact, you can see the data here listed as inactive. But maybe I would like to use that animated overhead pan in this mix as well. This is where the global renderer management options in the track right click menu come in. From here, you can clear and convert mixed data between formats on a track by track basis. Let's choose to convert from 360RA Walk Mix Renderer to Pro Tools Mix, selecting Automation. Now I have equivalent panning in my Atmos Mix. We hope this video helps to get you started exploring the full potential of 360 Reality Audio and bringing your music to life in three dimensions. 